Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're going to get started. Uh, Caesar, thanks for being here. Thank um, you. Thank you for doing it. Absolutely. Welcome to Miami. Thank you. It's been <laughs> wonderful. Um, I'd love to start off with a topic that's top of mind um, for everybody right now, which is the election, um, both with the Florida primary coming up, and then uh, Univision has a big event tomorrow with three of the candidates at this point. The Republicans. Um, yeah. Doing, uh, right, three uh, Republican contenders, especially as things get heated with the Republican field. Um, talk to me a little bit about what you guys are doing tomorrow, the format, why you're doing it this way, and, and how the election uh, plays into your what's mm -hmm. important and, and your programming strategy for 2012. Sure. Um, well, thanks again, Melissa, for taking the time um, and for everyone for joining us today. Uh, look, you know, j just from a macro perspective, I think we all know this. We are, you know, going through just such a fundamental demographic shift in our country, and Hispanics are driving that, that change. And that change is having cultural, economic, social, and really one of the big places it's going to have impact is on the political front. Um, and political ramifications. And so, you know, this 2012 election is, you know, is, is obviously important to us as a country, but I think it's going to be fascinating to us from a, from a Hispanic community perspective. Um, I think in so many ways, everyone agrees from all parties that the Hispanic vote will literally be the swing vote. Um, I think this is the first time that we have seen both parties, all candidates and those parties, um, really proactively recognize um, that Latinos are going to make a difference. I think part on a national basis, but I think particularly when you look at the swing states that are going to decide these elections, um, the Floridas, the Nevadas, the New Mexicos, the Arizonas, um, and some of the other bigger states, um, Latinos are going to play a very, very big role. Um, in Univision's case, you know, uh, being, um, being the leader and having the responsibility that we have um, here in the states, um, we have proactively gone after uh, our coverage um, from a news um, and a political coverage perspective. We feel it's, it's fundamental to what we do and it's just part of our DNA. Um, and so as part of that, tomorrow um, we are going to be hosting something we're very proud of. Um, the first time that all the leading rep Republican presidential candidates in this election cycle will be focused um, and having a forum to speak to Latinos directly, but more specifically about the issues that matter most uh, to Hispanics. Uh, and Which it doesn't, are what, um, among them, like what are the top three things we should expect them to Yeah, so, you know, I think on, on the one hand, there are, you know, some of the top issues on Latinos' minds are just like the rest of the, the, rest of the country. And I think economies and jobs um, mm -hmm. is, is first and foremost on most people's minds. Um, but I think, you know, our community also has a very, very big, um, puts a lot of weight on the issue of education. Um, and the, the opportunity to grow and develop themselves um, and, the, and the issue specifically of education reform here in this country. I think uh, second, um, you know, clearly the issue of immigration reform is one that's also uh, on, on Latinos' minds. Um, but I think also from a foreign policy perspective, you know, the, our region of Latin America um, sometimes does not uh, probably get the attention that it merits. Um, in some of these bigger debates, and so clearly that's um, that's one area as well that we're going to focus on, and, and, and healthcare. You know, I think that's an important issue in this election cycle. It'll be an important issue for us, uh, and so tomorrow we'll be speaking with the leading presidential candidates. Um, so you, have, big, you have Gingrich. We have Gingrich. We have uh, Romney. Romney. Um, Santorum is still, uh, you know, in confirming, okay. uh, and Ron Paul has not has not confirmed yet, um, okay. and so we have. The two ones, I think this is, you know, fascinating because the Republican primary uh, is going to occur on Tuesday. Um, you know, to have this in the state that probably is going to be swung by, by the uh, Latino vote should be a great conversation. All the polls are showing um, that both of these candidates are either neck and neck or one of them has pulled the head. So it should make for a competitive, a competitive night. Um, yesterday, we also um, unveiled our new news uh, set and so we're very excited about that because we've refreshed not only the on-air look, but the, te the technology that we're bringing to the Hispanic audience this year to cover, it, uh, to cover this political elections. And I think it'll make, a, it'll make a big difference as far as engaging our community. So for the format tomorrow, um, well, first of all, what, what are the conversations like with the campaigns? You know, are you going to them? Are they coming to you? Are you sort of feeling like you need to convey the importance and or do they get the picture, sort of? Sure. So um, 
Look, I, I think from a, from a macro perspective, um, I mean, anyone who's in any business, whether it's on the private sector or certainly in, in, in public service or, or in politics, I think recognizes the impact that, that Hispanics can have. You know, having said that, I think similar to our core advertising business, sometimes, you know, there's still a little bit of a, of a lag as far as understanding um, what are the things that drive this community or that, that move it? Um, how do you best address uh, and how do you best tap into um, speaking to, to Latinos? So I think we have those, those type of conversations. I think what I can tell this you is... It's been a little harder than you would have... I, I think liked. I can tell you this is... We're, we're, as far as the evolution of this, um, this is going much, much better. It's a much easier conversation. We're getting traction um, a lot sooner. I can tell you that like the last election. four years ago, okay. um, we, we made history when we held the same type of event. For the first time ever, we had presidential uh, primary debates, both for the Republican Party and for the Democratic Party, uh, for the Hispanic community. Had never been done. Um, you know, we thought that was going to be a layup. And, you know, it's, I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's confidential to say it was, you know, long um, and detailed conversations with both yeah. political parties so that they understood why it was so important for them to speak directly on the, uh, on the specific issues. Um, and this cycle, it, it has been a, a, little bit, um, a little bit simpler. Uh, but still, we still have work to go. And, you know, I think we're going to see um, some of that in the, in the next few days here in Florida and obviously as we go to the other uh, primaries in the other states. So tomorrow's format, though, it's not a debate format, correct? It is a, fo it is a forum. So we will have um, you know, our, our, uh, our big uh, journalist, Jorge Ramos. Um, Jorge is going to be interviewing probably in a similar type format like this, each of the candidates in 30-minute in in 30 30 increments. Okay. Why did you decide to do it that way as opposed to putting them next to each other and playing off of one another? Oh, I think it was just simple... Uh, uh, scheduling and, and, and conflicting. You know, to us, our priority is to make sure that these candidates come and address our community on the issues that matter the most. You know, whether the format is they go back to back or whether they're, you know, one on top of each other. We've had a lot of debates, as you can imagine, in this, uh, in this election cycle. Um, and I think this format actually is going to lend itself so we can actually dig in um, to the five or six issues that are really on people's minds. Now, um, as you mentioned, it was... Uh long and detailed conversations, getting people involved last election. Um, how has the campaign spending, um, how is that going for this election cycle relative to the last time around, especially given the super PAC money? Are you able to get some, of, you know, get your share of that? Sure. So, you know, one thing that's, you know, that again is not, is not uh, confidential information, the, uh, the percent of Latino electorate versus the percent of ad expenditure, political expenditure, um, is not equal right now. We lag um, as far as how much political expenditure is being spent on Hispanic or Spanish language media outlets versus the amount of, uh, of influence we have at the polls. Um, the amount of electorate is going up. Um, we also expect the amount of, uh, of political spending um, to go up over, you know, over a period of time. I think one of the good trends that we're seeing in this cycle is uh, historically we have not seen much, if any, spend in the primary cycle uh, of the election process focused on the Latino market. Um, we've seen most of the expenditure in the general election. Uh, in this cycle, we've already begun to see a trickle and some expenditure in the, in the primary process. You know, obviously, we only have one primary that, you know, on, on the Democratic side. It, you know, we're not seeing that. But, uh, but that's very encouraging. And, you know, again, when you see where the Latino electorate is concentrated and what are the states that are going to be the real battleground states, uh, we're, um, we're cautiously optimistic that we will, have, um, we will have a good year on that front. Good. Um, let's talk more generally about news. And uh, I know that's a, also a big push in this year with the new set and some other expansions that you've been launching as far as investigative news, correct, and documentary news and doc. Um, talk to me a little bit about how you, you see your audience um, as far as what they're asking for, what they want out of news, and um, sort of why you're doing what you're doing in that area. Sure. You know, I think in, in, a, in a lot of cases, um, you know, the overwhelming amount of Hispanics um, in this country are getting their news and information 
um, from Univision and, and, and many of our, our friends in the business. So, you know, we believe that we have the responsibility not only to make sure that we're giving them objective and complete information um, on all the issues, but at the same time, we need to continue to, you know, slowly and you know, in an economically feasible way, ramp up the quality of, of, of product and the diversity of product that we're offering to them. And so, two of the areas that we thought were underserved right now in our community, one was on the investigative front. We mm -hmm. felt that we needed to do more investigative reporting uh, on, on some of the issues that I think are unique uniquely relevant um, or that we have unique perspective on uh, in our community. Uh, we've done you know, a, a recent um, uh, investigation on the influence of, of Iran in Latin America. Uh, this documentary um, and investigation uh, got a tremendous amount of traction, uh, again, not only here in the Latino community, but also here in the overall U.S. Uh, community. And so, you know, I think it's an opportunity for our audience, but I think it's also an opportunity for us to be able to cross over um, and have the overall population understand the contributions that we can make to the journalistic discussions that, that are going on. And so, you know, documentaries and, um, and investigative is one of the areas that we think um, is one of the places we can help continue to contribute and elevate the conversation. So I have noticed, and correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like um, whether it's on Twitter or um, the, the streaming that you'll be doing with the uh, Meet the Candidates event tomorrow, more English language content. Is that, is that my imagination or is that a strategy? Do you see that as, as part of your strategy to continue to broaden uh, your audience and that crossover appeal? Not a, not a figment of your imagination, okay. yes. We're, uh, <laughs> we're, definitely, um, we're definitely doing some of it. You know, I think this is one, one of the one of the areas that probably has not received as much attention. Um, we've been, we're doing a lot of things in English. We have been doing um, uh, a variety of things and ramping up a little bit more and more over the years. One of the areas um, that we've been in, um, investing in and doing some work in on the English front is on the interactive side. Um, and the example you gave is on the, on the news NEWS side. Um, again, I think this is one of those areas that you know, we have seen such an interest and demand, not only from our community, but also from the overall uh, American population, they're interested in some of the issues that, and some of the perspectives, I should say, some of the perspectives from our community um, that we happen to cover more so just because they're near and dear and relevant to our, to our hearts. And so, you know, we have found that a way of literally translating um, some of that work has been to do our work um, in English as well. And we've seen tremendous success. We launched our uh, English news Tumblr site. Um, uh, uh, oh, bunch of months back, and I can tell you the, the reaction has been incredible. We've had um, following from a social media perspective where we've tapped into audiences that before knew, obviously, what Univision was, but they, they, they did not really understand, um, you know, the, the, the perspective and some of the, the unique value adds that we had, and particularly when you take into account that everyone's reading the same census that we all read, that, um, you know, if you want growth in your business, uh, the Hispanic community is where you're going to find growth. And so we found everyone from elected officials and politicians and influencers to, you know, corporate, you know, executives and the like, all are tapping in to try to get insights about our community through Univision's English language products. Did you ever consider subtitling, you know, prime time in English? Yeah, so uh, I don't want the, the audience to think that you're, I'm teeing you up on that one, but the answer is yes, and in fact, we'll be announcing that um, tomorrow, that for, um, the, we'll be uh, announcing closed captioning in English for our entire prime time, um, for all our novellas. Great so we're, minds. We're very, we're very <laughs> excited about that, um, and, and we think it's going to, again, continue to help us uh, to appeal to that audience beyond our, our core audience, because we all know, everyone certainly in, in this room who, who's in our industry knows um, what mass appeal we have uh, beyond just the, the core Latino audience. When will that start? Uh, it, will, it will commence on uh, next week with the premiere of our new novella, Talisman, okay. um, at 8 p.m., and we'll be doing it for our entire novella primetime block. Well, uh, that's great. I'm looking forward yes. to that because my Spanish is terrible. <laughs> I'd like to watch. Um, so speaking of launches coming up in the next week, Saturday, you have a big one with K Viva, The Chosen. Yeah, yes. these two people, Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony, I just hope, you know, I hope they punks. do okay. They just sit on their butts, you know, they're never doing anything. Um, 
huge launch for you guys, right? I mean, and this is part of a huge global launch. It'll be in multiple languages, and that I think that show already is going to be subtitled, correct? I think as part yes, of it that, around that the world. Yes, that show is is going to have a little bit of English, a little bit of Spanish, and you know, as you and mentioned, Portuguese, right? As correct. Well? Yep. Um, this is a this is a show that's you know transcending borders and the like. Um, and many of our, many of our partners, many of our friends throughout the region are also are also part of this. But you know, I think what's interesting is. Um, it's Simon and, and, and Jennifer and Mark, you know, selected Univision here in the United States to, I think, bring um, a, a very unique, a very groundbreaking show here. And again, I think it speaks to the, the universal appeal that um, that we as a community uh, are going to have. And I think it'll be a, it'll be a real fun show. And you know, I think a lot of people are interested these days how uh, Jennifer and Mark are, um, are interacting, so it should be fun. Well, I, I have to ask you, and I, and I know in the first episode they're going to talk a little bit about their split, but I have to wonder what went through your mind when you, know, you have this big project coming up and this incredible power couple, and then you hear that they're splitting up in the midst of this show. What, all I what asked on earth was, happened All I asked was, is it one private plane or two private planes? <laughs> What's the impact going to be to them? No, look, I, I, they're, they're both fantastic and they're both um, incredible professionals and have huge followings. Mm. And so, you know, we have, uh, we have high hopes and, uh, and we're excited for it. So last year on this stage, I asked Gerhard Zeiler, who runs RTL Group, what he thought X Factor was going to do because it was before that, that show debuted. So I have to ask you, you know, what are your expectations ratings-wise uh, for your show on Saturday. What do you think it's going to do? Can you um, I, I, give a I guess? Prob- I probably give a range. Give, I probably wouldn't give d- specific um, expectations, you know, but I can tell you, you know, this has been part, I think, of a broader um, initiative for us of trying to find, you know, uh, programming and genres that are going to freshen our screen and are going to appeal um, to, a, to a broad audience. And so I think that show would do it. Um, we've had a show on the air called Dale Con Ganas, which is um, a partnership with, uh, with David Broom um, and Emilio Stefan uh, from The Biggest Loser. Um, and so this has been a show. This is The Biggest Loser applied um, to the Latino community. It's been extraordinarily well received. Um, and, and I think it's doing a tremendous amount of, of public good. Um, we've done a lot of work in the reality genre. Um, as you may know, we have a wonderful co-production with our friends at Endemol called Mira Kim Baila mm-hmm. um, that we're now uh, entering. We finished our second season, a uh, very successful season. And, you know, bringing that, that, those new genres, diversifying the type of programming is something that, you know, we're very excited about doing. And we're going to continue to innovate. We're going to continue to do it. So you're not going to tell me, you're not going to Simon Cowell me, uh, 20 million? No? Not tonight. <laughs> well, let's talk about Saturdays a little bit. Sure. Um, there was an interesting conversation up here yesterday. Um, uh, Paul Telegdi from NBC and John Sade from ABC and Mark Itkin from William Morris Endeavor about uh, Saturday viewing habits in this country. Um, and that there isn't really one in prime time in the general market speaking. Yes. But, but Univision has a, has a tradition of programming Saturday nights, right? Is this, do you see this as an opportunity perhaps to, again, look at the idea of crossing over, um, you know, with general viewership in this country, English or Spanish or any language speaking viewers? Sure. What do you think about Saturdays and... Well, look, I, I'd make one comment, and I'll, I'll tell you my, my, my humble thoughts on Saturdays. Um, look, I think the one thing that's, that's wonderful, and I think it's so important for our industry, is that you know, we've evolved to a point that now, whenever people are talking about ABC, CBS, NBC, and Fox, they're talking about Univision in the same breath. And I think that's a, a success, not, not, not necessarily just for Univision, but I think for our industry, that we've, we've come of age and we've evolved. And so... I think it's, it's wonderful that the industry is looking at what, you know, we look at what works in other parts of the industry, but now they're also looking at what has worked for us historically. Um, and so that we've arrived, I think, is important. You know, on Saturday specifically, as, you know, as many people know, we, we do have um, a program, a genre that has worked well. Um, yeah. You know, uh, Sao Gigante this year will be celebrating the astonishing, you know, 50th. 1,000th year. Oh, just kidding. Yeah, exactly. No, actually, you're not that far off. Um, and, you know, Don, Don Francisco is, is an incredible human being. He's got more energy at his young age than I do, and, you know, God, God bless him. And, you know, he has been extraordinarily successful. And what we love about it, it's a, not only it's his consistency, but it's a format that is family-friendly. Yeah. It's, um, it's a variety 
uh, format that allows us to be very flexible, and it's uh, it's got universal appeal. It's not only been successful here in the United States, but in countries countries around the world. Um, and so I think this is one of the places where we Univision have, have have shown, and we our industry have shown that we can we can lead and we can innovate. You know, one of the things I always say, he, he was one of the groundbreakers when it came to working with advertisers, mm -hmm. working with. Um, with products and the like, and so I think it's it's an area that um, that absolutely can can be learned and grown. Let's talk. Let's go back to your point about um, Univision and its place in the TV landscape and sure. the conversations when we're talking about the traditional big four. Um, it is obviously it is a different business targeting two different language mm -hmm. speaking viewerships. Um, where, where do you feel that that conversation needs to go for your business in the year ahead um, with advertisers, with viewers? Um, y you know, yes, we talk because the numbers speak volumes. You know, I get the ratings releases and I see, you know, there are nights, absolutely, um, Univision has more people um, watching programs than some of the big four at times. And... But I, I go go back to you know I guess the question of you're also targeting different advertisement and different marketers you know different commercials because they're going to be in different languages. So walk me through a little bit more of the conversations that you're having, where you'd like to see them go, sure. how you'd like to see perceptions evolve. Sure. Well, look, there's a, maybe I'll pick up on that. You know, there, there are sometimes some, some misperceptions, and I think, you know, one of the places to start with is, you know, addressing those. And I think, you know, the first is, you know, is this the, the scale issue? I mean, people sometimes, um, and entities sometimes don't realize, you know, that every single night Univision, you know, beats one of those networks. Uh, and that's across, you know, the, 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 the larger demographic groups, adults 18 to 49. When you look at the younger demographics, um, adults 18 to 34 were much stronger. In fact, in uh, the, this past quarter, we were the second largest network in the country, adults 18 to 34, regardless of language. Um, so I think scale is one big misperception. I think a second misperception is, to go to this last point, is that um, it's older people watching um, Spanish language media instead of younger. And in fact, it's completely the opposite. We mm -hmm. skew much, much younger than, um, than many of the English language networks. We as a community, we as a, as a culture um, are much, much younger. And so I think that's, that's an important um, you know, conversation to have. And I think the third misperception that we've been running into, um, particularly over the last year or two, is a lot of times people think of our, in our particular case, our company, they think of Univision as just one asset, just Univision the network. Right. Um, and in our case, we've evolved from the beginning of 2011, we'll have been three TV networks, Univision, Telefutura, and Galavision. Um, that's the beginning of 2011. At the end of 2012 this year, we'll be 12 networks. Um, and we've evolved from, you know, obviously having the general interest, large yeah. platform, um, to now having very specific um, genres that target. And we recognize that that is a very, very important uh, conversation for our um, for our advertisers and for our partners. And so I think that misperception is one that addresses. And, I, and I'll tell you the last one, which is I think this issue that, that we run into, this misperception, which is this issue of, of language. Um, and one of the things that's important to point out is, you know, we have a huge, as, as, as do many of us in the industry, we have huge pockets of bilinguals watching, um, watching Univision and watching Spanish language TV. You know, one of the things I always try to stress, uh, m most of our audience, you don't get to the size of numbers we have without having people that are bilingual, um, big chunks of them. And so most of our audience is not watching because they have no other choice. They're watching because they're making the proactive decision because this is culturally relevant, yeah. high quality content that speaks to them and that they're choosing to watch. They can, of course, change the channel and watch something in English. And so I think that you know, it's not necessarily a different audience. It's just a unique way of getting to a, a specific part, a specific consumer in a way that emotionally connects with them probably in a better way or engages with them in a better way than it may with other type of, uh, of content. So what do you want marketers to do, ideally, in 2012, differently, as part of these conversations? Look, the, 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 the honest and, and very, very direct conversations we have with marketers all the time is we say, look, this is, we give them the economic argument, you know. Like move your money from here to here? 
Well, we, 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 we don't pretend to tell them what, what they should do with their money, but we, but we look at it from, a, from an economic and efficiency perspective. When you look at most of, of the businesses and organizations in this country, you know, a lot of the, of, of the war that they're having is you know, they're having uh, attrition between their competitors. They're just fighting back and forth to try to get the exact same pool of, uh, of customers. Um, I'll give you the example of, uh, of, of distributors or satellite companies or cable companies today in the United States. Um, when it comes to you know, non-Hispanic customers, you know, cable and satellite are sort of fighting for these subscribers, right? But the net net number probably stays more about the same. Mm -hmm. The penetration of cable and satellite subscribers in the Hispanic market is very, very low. And so the ability to offer them an opportunity to grow their business um, is something that, you know, when you walk through that opportunity is very, very attractive to them. And so all we're asking them to do is to invest their money in the areas that are going to give them the best ROI for those dollars spent. And once you actually spend the time and understand the uh, ramifications of that, um, it is a very, very compelling case. Now, does that mean that they can just, you know, on a dime, turn it and, and right. do it overnight? No, the answer is no, and we recognize that. You know, they do have to be able to have some internal uh, resources that understand the community. They also have to be able um, to be able to, um, you know, to to produce uh, advertising or the media uh, in language or in culturally relevant manners. And so that's something that, in many cases, we work with them on, on that front. And we have so many case studies that has been so successful, and we hope to be able to replicate that. Instead of with you know, 5, 10, or mm -hmm. 20 people a year, we hope to be able to do 50 or 100 a year. What do you make of uh, Fox and RCN's big move this week to bring Spanish language programming to the U.S.? Because as we always say, we think, we think it's great. Um, you know, I think uh, competition is good for everyone. It helps us innovate. It helps all of us in the industry stay sharp and, and have better, better product. Um, I think the second thing is it, it, it's another voice in the market talking about the opportunity and the, and the growth in this community. And so, you know, what's the saying? All tie, good high tides rise all, all boats tide, yeah. um, or something like that. <laughs> uh, I, think it's, I think it's wonderful um, um, for everyone. And, you know, and also everyone in this industry, I think, is very welcoming and very used to competition. You know, we have uh, close to 100 now um, networks uh, focused on the Hispanic community. And so, you know, competition is nothing new to none of us, and, and we're excited, and, uh, and we welcome it. Uh, you, I have one more question, and then we're going to take a couple of questions from the audience. Um, you have a new colleague. Last year, uh, Randy Falco joined yes. the company. Uh, how's that partnership uh, going? How do you guys split things up? How's it changed your outlook? Sure. Well, you know, the way we split it up is he's the CEO and, and, and I'm not. So uh, that's the easy, easy way. But no, Randy is an incredible, incredible guy, um, an incredible executive. We're very fortunate to have someone like him. He has, you know, 30 plus years of experience um, in, in, in this direct business, you know, and, and he brings, um, you know, just a set of values and a set of experiences um, that are invaluable to, to us, Univision, at, at this stage in our, in our development. Um, you know, and, and on, a personal on a personal level, um, you know, we have very, very, um, we have very complementary um, skill sets. We have, on a, we've gotten along on a personal level incredibly well. And so, you know, we're, we're lucky to have someone of his caliber here at, uh, at Univision leading Fantastic. us. Fantastic. Uh, we do have time for a question or two. Do we have any out here? We step to the mic in the middle. Bueller? Okay. It's a shy group or we answered everything. I, I have more. I have more. Okay. Um, let's talk about what you learned in 2011 that you're applying to 2012. You know, what... Were there any um, mistakes or triumphs that are informing what you're doing this year? Yeah. Look, I think the big learning that we had is that the, the evolution from programming in a linear uh, to a nonlinear world um, is accelerating. Okay. And I think, you know, everyone, you know, sees this trend or has seen this trend coming. Uh, and I, I think for us, adjusting to that evolution or that accelerated evolution uh, is probably one of the big, the big learnings that, um, that we've had. Um, and second, you know, um, I think another evolution for us is, you know, again, just like, you know, I just articulated out of one side of my mouth that, you know, we want people to see us 
more than one network, we have 12 networks. Um, we internally have to do that as well. Mm -hmm. And how we program, how we manage, um, that evolution is something that, that we're also working on. Uh, and it'll be uh, one of our priorities for 2012. What can Univision do better than any other brand or company? Look, Univision um, has the has the the privilege of having been in this um, in this market and serving our community for fifty plus years now, uh, and you know our the Hispanic community is very loyal. Um, we understand very well what are some of the the unique needs that they have, and so something that we have focused on throughout our our time is making sure that we weave in the social um, the social challenges that they have. Um, into the day-to-day -day work that we do. And so one of our primary areas of focus is the area of education. Um, we know how that moves the needle for our community, and we're going we're gonna to continue to do it. And so I think that's one of the areas where we're able, because of our scale uh, and because of the great people we have in front and behind the camera, that we're able to bring some value, in, and we're going to continue to try, to try to do it on that front. Finally, what is just your absolute number one priority goal, hope for, t for the next 12 months? Uh, for the you know for the next 12 months, um, look, we, we you know we, we want to see Univision um, really transcend. Uh, you know, I think the breakthrough in the mindset of our partners, of the media, uh, of, of of everyone in the industry that that we have arrived, and that not only are we competing, uh, but we are at the level. Uh, of of some of the the large English language networks, uh, and 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 hopefully we're adding value with different and innovative ideas that, um, that's going to benefit everyone. And so that's, that for us is really, is really the, big, the big challenge, is to break through in sort of that clutter. Uh, that will be a big victory for us. Well, thank you so much for um, all of your insight today. Uh, please join me in thanking Cesar Condor. Thanks, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.